You, you're now an international boxer, which is fantastic achievement for you. And I know you're a very good Gaelic footballer. So some boys and girls watching with dyspraxia say, well, I'm never going to be that. Or parents would feel, I'm never going to be that. Was it always easy for you? No, like not really. Like um, when I started, like I was very clumsy, like especially in boxing, like I couldn't skip, couldn't like put my hands up and bounce at the same time. I couldn't do anything. But what I lacked in like natural talent and like like core strength and stuff, like the dyspraxia gave me like determination and like working hard. Like I worked hard and just sort of kept going. And I like, think that might be. I'm not sure that's the dyspraxia because of other children. They kind of. It's so hard to give up, but you didn't. Yeah, no, I just kept working hard. Like, like sometimes it's it's very easy just to give up, and like a lot of time I was very tempted to give up. But I think if you find something you love, mm. like I love boxing and stuff. So when you find that, I think you're more willing to like keep going. And Tell me a little bit about the success you've had in boxing. Uh, well, currently I won six All Ireland titles. And um, at 13, I went represented Ireland in the schoolgirl Europeans and uh, came home with a silver medal. And then last year, I represented Ireland in the junior Europeans and came home with a bronze medal. So that's very exciting going abroad, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's like you make lifelong friends as well because like it's a di it's nearly a different team like every year. Like you'll have mm. the same few faces, but there's a lot of new people every year. So it's like you make lifelong friends as well as getting the experience. And there's a lot more medals you want to get yet. Yeah, definitely, 100%. But um, I just focus nearly on one fight at a time. So mm. hopefully I win the Irish during like two or three weeks. So hopefully I'll win them and then go off to the Europeans again Brilliant. and hopefully come home with a goal this year. So when, when, were, you, when were you diagnosed? Uh, I was diagnosed when I was 10. And, um, and what was recommended? for me to do gymnastics, swimming or boxing, but I like didn't like water or anything. So I just went to my local boxing club. Like my parents or anything don't have any connections. And did you go boxing, boxing before gymnastics? Yeah, I didn't even try the gymnastics. So just sort of the idea of it just didn't appeal to me, you know, so. You're not afraid of getting hit? <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, no, I don't, I don't know. I just sort of like just had to go at it and just sort of went from there. And presumably that was to get you core strength. Yeah, and like my balance and yeah. core strength, yeah. Because you didn't have... I had, like, I, I literally wouldn't be able to stand in the street, like... Yeah. And, you know, especially when, like, I went to the occupational therapist and stuff, and I was, like, walking a straight line, I was, like, wibbly wobbly, yeah, like... Yeah. But, um, yeah, the boxing really helped with it, like, so... It was really good when I got diagnosed, because at least, like, I identified the problems, and, like, the occupational therapist and stuff suggested... Yeah to take up one of the sports and that's what I did and it really helped like. So skipping for boxing, uh, see, I don't know how. I Honestly, I don't know how like I'm actually able to do it, but at the start, like I wasn't able to do it at all. Like, but. Um, because you hadn't the coordination. Yeah, like I'd be falling over myself. Like the many times I fell like, on the floor, or, like let the rope fall when I was trying to jump or anything. But um, yeah, no, I like, just kept going and I like, kept trying and eventually it got to me. And do you mind me asking, were you self-conscious when it wasn't working out for you? Yeah, like even like when I was in the boxing club, I'd sort of like try and hide in the corner because I didn't want anybody else like Laugh maybe to see me or laugh yeah. at me or whatever. But um, actually like boxing is very inclusive. Like you, you'd be surprised, but like the amount of people in my club that has like dyspraxia and stuff and right. that struggled with it. But um, yeah, I, like I did a lot at home as well, just to try and like improve. So I wouldn't feel as embarrassed, if you know what I mean, when I went to the club. But yeah, there's a lot of people that struggled with skipping, but like I suppose you just have to keep trying. And but now you're on the Irish team, so obviously you're a good skipper. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose it's just hard work, like, but yeah, I, I'm able to skip now. And through improving your core, and you then had better balance, obviously. Yeah. And that helped when you played Football. football as well, yeah. I think like nearly once you have a good core, your like your whole body's nearly stronger. So, um, yeah, but it, it definitely did help me. And what about school? Because others have told me with dyspraxia, it's difficult in school. Yeah, like I use a laptop in school, like so I don't write because my handwriting uh, it's like messy. When like I, I can't go fast either. Yeah. So um, I use a laptop in school, and like organising my books and stuff is hard, but. Um, I like write like the names of my books on like the spine of them so I can pick them out. But 
Why other, previously, what, were you pulling out every book? I just went and pull out any book <laughs> and forget the books going to class. Uh -huh. And then you just get in trouble and stuff. But um, yeah, no, like definitely with the spine, like the yeah. name of the book on the spine definitely helped. Do you get tired in school? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, my hand used to get like really sore and tired when I was writing, but um, the school provided me with a laptop now. so. I you, type all my notes and stuff. So. Well, you're lucky the school was yeah. understanding and helpful. But even like all the teachers, like they're so like understanding and stuff. Like oh, you're very lucky. Yeah, like even if I have like a double class, they'll let me go for like a wee walk or whatever. Oh, like yeah. and. So, what are your ambitions? Um, well, I want to win a European gold medal. So, uh, I already have this European silver and European bronze. So. Hopefully I'll get, I'll get the European goal this year. That'd be fantastic. And what would you say now to a younger girl or boy who's, who's looking at the video, who, who struggles with sport? What would you say to them? Um, I'd just say keep working hard. And like people are going to tell you that like, you're, like you have dyspraxia, you're not good enough, or they're going to like Joe put you in like a, a group to say that you can't do sport, but anything is possible. And like, just keep going and like especially if you enjoy the sport keep going and you'll do well in it like and for coaches because not every coach understands. i know you're very lucky with your boxing coach aren't you yeah jim, jim yeah he like he's unreal like he understands dyspraxia and understands me like and he's really good like he give me like loads of like attention and like time like help me along the way so he's helped you develop a lot yeah 100 percent. yeah and what would you say to to parents who are wondering like even I, I went through it. You know what I mean? Do you keep bringing a child to sport that they're not good at? That they're uh, if they if they enjoy it, good? definitely keep bringing them. But um, I'd say just find something like once they enjoy it, just keep going to it because like the talent or whatever will come. Like it's worked great for you. Yeah, anyway, thank you very much. Lovely. Well, lovely to meet you. Thank you very much.